Joining us right now to talk more about the story is Bethany McLean. She is Vanity Fair contributing editor, also the host of the podcast called Making a Killing. By the way, Bethany is also a CNBC contributor, and she interviewed David Sackler in June, detailed in a recent Vanity Fair piece. Bethany, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me. What do you think about this potential settlement deal, what it means for the family, what it means for Purdue, and then the industry beyond? I think it's a brilliant move um, because if Purdue can be the first ones to settle and the Sacklers can completely cut any ties they have to the opioid business, which they would not only by paying the $3 billion, but also by selling Mundy Pharma and contributing another $1.5 billion from the sale of that overseas entity, which is not part of Purdue. And it would disassociate the, the Sackler family from the opioid crisis going forward. And if they can reach this global settlement, it's, it's, it's a way forward out from under this mountain of 2000 and lawsuits plus, which could which could increase any day, and there's there's no end in sight, right? I mean, this this is the only smart path forward. It just seems like when you talk about these 2,000 potential jurisdictions going after it, it would be great if you could really do that, but it, it still seems like we're a long way from reaching that 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 end. From people I've spoken to, this is not a, a done deal. It's a framework for a deal, and many of the details remain to be hashed out. Many really important details remain to be hashed out. So it's a framework. That's it. You, when you spoke with David Sackler, what was your takeaway? What do you think about the far, the family's situation? Obviously, the family itself is splintered in some of these things. I think the family itself is very splintered, and I suspect there is some opposition within the family to this deal. I think there are still some who believe if we could only tell our story in the courts, um, we, we, we might be able to change public opinion. I think there's a real sense of righteousness within the family that the news around this has been all wrong, and that if they could only get out there and tell their story, they could convince the world to see it the way, the way that they do. But there's that belief versus the realities of the legal system, right? And I don't think the... I don't think the discussions of a settlement mean the family believes they've done anything wrong. I think it's just the practicalities involved in this legal morass. You mentioned Mundi. Uh, we, we talked about it in the last hour, but that, again, is the pharmaceutical or the collection of pharmaceutical companies overseas that were selling these same drugs, right? Right, right. Um, and so I think this is part of the way that if they sell that entity to, it gets the Sacklers completely out of the opioid business and cuts all the ties. The LA Times had a fantastic series of investigative work into uh, Mundi Pharma and, and pointed out that it seemed like it was pursuing sort of the same strategy uh, overseas that we'd already seen in the U.S. with these drugs. And so you kind of wonder if that's part two of the opioid crisis going global. Yeah, I was going to say global, a global settlement doesn't mean global. No, it, it means all the stuff here in the United States. <laughs> it means States. globally in the U.S. <laughs> with all the different parties here, of which there are many. Uh, and you also have to wonder about the Department of Justice here because uh, they're not implicated in this settlement as far as I know. No, this is purely a civil settlement. A crim any criminal charges would be, would be separate from this. And so if the family settles or if the company settles, it would probably be without admitting guilt, as you said, in some of these other situations, because that could then be used against them? Well, it's a civil case, so there wouldn't be an admission of criminal guilt anyway. It would just purely be... Done wrong, it, right, right. I'd, there wouldn't be anything. But one pivotal point that I think remains to be seen is this idea that if, they, if there is this settlement, all the documents that have, been, that have come forward in the litigation, which are now under seal, never, never get released, and nobody ever gets to know what what really happened. And I think from, from what I know, it is a point in the settlement discussions whether there would be some giant document repository that everybody would then be able to go through and say, all right, let's, let's excavate this. Let's see who knew what when at which companies. And I think that that idea of transparency is so critical to the resolution of this. So. It does nothing if all the, I mean, it does something, but it doesn't, if all the documents get buried, it, it, and you I, can't find I, the truth. I, yes. So if the Sacklers think they need to tell their story and they'll come out looking good, why wouldn't they allow those documents to be not under seal. You would you would think that that would be the right answer, right? Um, lawyers have <laughs> when lawyers get involved, <laughs> all of this opinion. stuff gets 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 complicated. Yeah. But I really do believe in my time with David Sackler. I don't necessarily agree with him, but I think he believes the story he 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 tells. He believes in his family's righteousness. He doesn't think they've done anything wrong.